coming up on AgWeek TV. Cool, wet weather continues to keep farmers out of the field. I'm Jeff Beach at a dairy farm in northwest Minnesota that is struggling to bounce back after the drought of 2021. We'll meet a South Dakota farmer with an unusual musical and family collaboration. And we'll take you to a Minnesota house made from a grain bin. Welcome to AgWeek TV, I'm Emily Beal. It's hard to get crops planted when fields are cold and wet, and that's what growers saw again this week. The latest USDA crop progress report shows neither North Dakota or Minnesota had more than two days suitable for field work over the past week. Iowa had even less than that. And the latest planting numbers reflect it. Corn planting in the Dakotas and Minnesota is lagging well behind. At just 14%, Iowa, the top corn producing state, is also far behind its normal pace of 63% and last year's 84% number. Soybean planting is only 12% behind its national average, but in the upper Midwest, none of the four states have even reached the 10% mark. At just 2%, Minnesota is way off its 50% average for spring wheat planting. However, South Dakota is near and Montana is above its average for this state. At 2 and 8%, sugar beet planting is still well behind its average in the 60s in North Dakota and Minnesota. Last year at this time, both states had over 90% of the beets planted. While there's rarely a normal weather year in agriculture, sugar beet growers have faced many roadblocks since 2019. I visited with Jason Schotsky where he discussed the recent turbulent years of being a sugar beet grower. Sugar beets are the mainstay. That's our number one crop. They, they bring us, they, they carry the water year in and year out. No pun intended is what's going on outside right now. Jason Schotsky farms in Wheatland, North Dakota with his wife and children. They run a diverse operation with corn, soybeans, wheat, edible beans, sunflowers, and of course, sugar beets. Sugar beets, uh, the, the industry and the crop have done a lot for me personally. They have helped me to become a better farmer because of attention to detail. Schotsky, like many growers, have faced a difficult couple of years with the commodity. Last year's drought impacted crops and the warm weather delayed harvest. But the disaster of 2019 was the worst year many sugar beet growers have ever seen. The hair on the back of my neck just stood up when you said the fall of 2019. That year, about 30% of Schotsky's crop was unable to be harvested due to the excessive rainfalls than the beets freezing in the field. This year, too much rain has kept most beet growers out of their fields entirely. Yes, it's trying. Yes, it's difficult, but we're going to be okay. The sun's going to come up tomorrow. We're going to be able to get out of bed and go to work and, and do what we love to do. And uh, the crop's going to be okay. With all of agriculture, we just got to roll with the punches, deal with, with what the good Lord gives us. And right now he's given us a lot of moisture. Last year, he gave us a lot of, uh, a lot of heat and dryness. Harrison Weber is the executive director of the Red River Valley Sugar Beet Growers Association and works closely with growers. He says stress is something that comes with the job. Part of being a farmer and part of being a beet grower. As we just heard, farmers and ranchers are no strangers to stress since the occupation can be very unpredictable. With recent spring weather events adding to that stress, it's important for producers to not let it take over and to search out mental health resources when needed. If you had diabetes, you wouldn't tell your pancreas to just toughen up. You'd go get some help. And so um, it's not weak. It's the right thing to do if you need it. So take care of yourselves. A farming operation has many moving parts, but a farmer's mental health isn't one that should be overlooked. Health is probably the most important resource that you have uh, on your farm or ranch operation. There's a lot of different assets that we assign to a farm or ranch operation like land and livestock, seed, but actually your health is the most important resource that you depend on. The North Dakota State Department of Agriculture currently has a grant from the USDA that's focused on farm and ranch stress assistance. The University of Minnesota Crookston had a high profile graduation speaker this year, U.S. Ag Secretary Tom Vilsack. Vilsack was the keynote speaker at the school's commencement ceremony on May 7th. The Ag Secretary called this graduating class, which made it through a pandemic to get their degrees, a class of resiliency. You have also persevered during a unique and I would say an historically disruptive time in our world. So I think each of you has a specific reason to be proud and confident in your ability to handle whatever life may have in store for you from this point on. 
Vilsack said one of the ways graduates can contribute to a more resilient America is to consider working for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. More than half of the agency's workforce is at or near retirement, and only 7 percent is under the age of 35. 29 agencies, eight different mission areas. You can have your pick of work that can make America more resilient. U of M Crookston was launched as an agricultural high school in 1906. After years of struggle, the 2021 drought was the last straw for a West Central Minnesota dairy farmer. Vernon Qual sold off most of his herd this spring, but as Jeff Beach reports, Qual is determined to build back up. Qual Dairy is hoping to build its herd back up with heifers that will be calving in September. I always knew I wanted to milk cows. You used to be able to just work hard and you made money. Mm -hmm. It's not that way anymore. The Qual family has had this dairy farm since 1981. Vernon Qual says they've been struggling for a while. A few years ago, they were a million dollars in debt before filing for bankruptcy in 2016. Well, my dad's 77 and he's been complaining the last two years about selling the cows, sell the cows. Last summer after the, or during the drought, I knew this ain't gonna be good. Feed's gonna get real expensive. While they had managed to pay off about half their debt before the cow sale, the 2021 drought drastically cut into their feed supply, and rising prices for feed made it hard to maintain the 300 cow herd. And he says many other producers are struggling too. Corn's getting higher and higher every day. And if you're buying corn, you're paying at least 75 cents a bushel more than what farmers are selling it for. After the sell-off of the herd, Qual Dairy is using this time to make repairs around the farm. Trying to make a decent operation. The sale allowed them to nearly pay off the rest of their debt, but it's not the end of Qual Dairy. Vernon kept back about 60 of the lowest producing cows and is still milking them. And he has 65 bred heifers in a freestall barn, ready to start calving in September. I want to keep going at it. So it was my dream. In Underwood, Minnesota, this is Jeff Beach for Ag Week. The dairy has earned many honors over the years, including the 2010 Premier Dairy Award for West Ottertail County. Coming up on Ag Week TV. We'll meet a female farmer who's a concert pianist and much, much more. Last year's drought really cut into yields for some growers. Couple that with high and rising fertilizer costs and that can lead to real problems for growers. But there is a solution. Aquayield products save you money because you use much less. If the average price of what you're going to use in the Aquayield products is anywhere from $12 to $15 per acre, you can compare that to standard fertilizers that would be up in that $50 to $60 per acre. Aquayield's efficiency comes through the use of nano-liquid technology. But we've had proof of where farmers can see a bushel increase. Aquayield is unique in that it can be deployed as a delivery vehicle into micro and macro nutrients and other crop protection products a grower is already using. It protects them in the patented Aquayield nanoparticle. These tiny particles penetrate root and leaf tissue, improving absorption into the plant. Nanoliquid technology truly lets you use less and yield more. It's fun to sit down with the producers and go through the details of what nanotechnology is all about. At Advanced Grain Handling Systems, we're your full-service grain dryer and bin project partner. We'll handle everything from start to finish. These guys are all in one. That was one of the big draws. They were the general. They took care of the electrical. They took care of the cement, took care of everything. Whether your next project is big or small, let our team help with it all. Visit advancedgrainhandling.com. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the Summers VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a Super Coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new Summers Super Coulter Samurai. Go to SummersMFG.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. All right, here's the free gift I got for opening up a checking account. Let's see what I get. Okay guys, so I got this portable DVD player. Yeah, I'm not sure why my bag would give me a tiny waffle maker. So it's a tumbler, but it doesn't fit in any of my cup holders. I wasn't even sure they still made these. Is it for kids? Is this for kids? 
don't fall for the free gift. Find a bank that cares about what you really need. Cornerstone Bank. Multitasking and cooperation are common on the farm, but Mickle Page found a woman who takes that to a whole new level. She's a triple threat with triplets. It's our Ag Week cover story. I would always have considered myself a pianist first. Ann Walter came back from a concert pianist career to join the family farm, but she also became a wife, mother of triplets, and a cancer survivor. I never understood that I had to be a certain thing. Within a strong Mennonite ag and arts heritage, Walter majored in biology and piano performance in college. That led her into a stint teaching in India. It was a, an international school in, on the side of a mountain. She went on to get master's and doctorate degrees in piano performance and taught at colleges in the East for several years, but she was still looking for her path in life. When she was in college, she'd occasionally help her parents back on the farm, and 10 years later, from 2010 to 2015, she rented soybean and corn acres from them on her own. And in 2016, she came home to be a full partner with them in the 1,600-acre corn and soybean farm. Keith and Sharon Waltner are happy and is coming alongside. She's intuitive. She was good with machinery. She was good with livestock. Walter says she's comfortable with the technology side of farming, but still counts on her dad to help fix equipment. When the chips are down and something is broken and you've got to find a way to fix it efficiently, that's what I'm nervous about. In addition to a major career change, there have also been other changes in Walter's life. In 2015, she married Rolf Olson, a college music professor, not a farmer. In 2017, she gave birth to triplet girls. <laughs> Some days I wake up and it's like, wow. Two years later, she was diagnosed with leukemia but she is doing well with treatment. And if that's not enough, she just landed a post as principal keyboard player for the Sioux Falls Symphony, where Rolf is already in the trumpet section. So in a career like farming that always takes a lot of collaboration, this musical collaborator is taking things to a new level. I love what I do. I'm working with all my favorite people. I mean, who gets to do that? For Ag Week, this is Michael Pates at Parker, South Dakota. You can read much more on our cover story in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. A couple Minnesota farmers and fiber artists have formed a partnership to help them expand their flocks and revitalize the American wool industry. Teresa Benz and Alejandra Sanchez produce wool for spinners. They also teach classes. When they saw how much interest there was in what they do, the duo raised enough money in a Kickstarter campaign to expand their mill. The two are now co-owners of Norn Sisters Woolen Mill in southeastern Minnesota. They raised the funds because many USDA ag grants are strictly reserved for food production, and the programs don't recognize wool production and textiles as an agricultural product. A lot of agricultural grants look at the textile side of the sheep industry as textiles and clothing manufacturing. Even though we're not making clothing, we're just making yarn. The Norn Sisters comes from Germanic mythology, and it's, it's about the three sisters that weave the threads of humankind's fate. The cost of processing and difficulty marketing were described as the biggest barriers to shepherds selling wool. In Minnesota, there are 39 different breeds of sheep raised for both meat and wool. NDSU Extension is offering young people the chance to help save pollinators. They received a grant from the National 4-H Council and Corteva AgriScience for its Pollinator Habitat Ambassador Program. The program prepares the next generation of pollinator experts by connecting local 4-H programs and community organizations to plan and install pollinator habitats. The pollinators are more than just your average honeybee. If they're interested in bees, yes. Um, it's fun because when we think of pollinators, pollinators are so many things. Even you as a person is a pollinator. Um, so they get to take this information that they use and they get to bring it back to their communities. The North Dakota 4-H Pollinator Habitat Ambassadors team currently has four open seats. Still ahead, we'll meet a Minnesota couple with a new use for grain bins. Your legacy is not only where you came from, but more importantly, it's where you're headed. With our toolbox of reproductive technologies, exceptional team of professionals, and more than 40 years of experience, we continue to create future leaders. Whether it's advancing superior genetics or empowering the next generation of livestock producers, you can trust TransOva to continue your legacy. 
At Gateway Building Systems, we provide unmatched service to all of our customers. Butler Builder understands this. We combine creative design capabilities with superior workmanship to deliver optimal building solutions. Our team provides insight that takes you from the ground up to build your future. Gateway Building Systems and Butler Buildings are designed for strength, durability, and longevity. We are here to build your project and maintain it for the next generation. For over 130 years, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska has been providing protection from the unexpected. Farmers and ranchers choose Farmers Mutual insurance coverage for their industry experience, prompt claim service, and unmatched financial strength. Experience an insurance plan that's customized for your operation. Visit FMNE.com to contact an agent for a quote today. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Every season has an end. After spending your whole life building something, it could be hard to move on to your next stage in life. But when that time comes, you deserve to have someone you trust guide you through the process. And by trusting us to pass on your legacy, it gives someone else the chance to create their own. Every auction has a story. Let us share yours. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has the storage, conditioning, and handling equipment to fit any size operation with a wide variety of options and accessories, including our patented Blockbuster Auger to help break up blockages over the center sump gate and a full line of mixed flow grain dryers with even heating, excellent efficiency, and expandable capacities. Protect your investment and market your grain. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with Superior Grain Equipment. Warmer temperatures finally made their way to the region, but how long can we expect them to last? Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. Forecast conversation around the Northern Plains, Upper Midwest, Southern Canada Plains weather right now has everything to do with this ongoing wet weather pattern that's built in during April, has continued into May, the saturated soils over many parts of this region, and what impacts that has as the weather goes forward. There's an old farmer's proverb, wet weather makes wet weather, and there is some science to that. When the soils are totally saturated, there's more evaporation available so that once you get some kind of a weather system, there's more more water vapor going up. So even sometimes marginal weather systems, which if the soils were dry, would not produce any significant rain, produce significant rain. So there is a, some truth to that. It is not, however, uh, an, an ends-all type of a proposition, because obviously we can go from wet to dry and dry to wet. That is a normal situation. But what impact will this current wet weather pattern that we have in the central part of the continent have on what had been expected to be a warm and dry summer across this same part of the country. Well, let's look at the pattern right now. For most of the winter, the jet was coming out of the northwest, and that was delivering a lot of blizzards, but mostly not a lot of snow for this area. There was above average snowfall kind of in this region and very much below average snowfall in this region with the jet coming right out of the west. Well, over the last few weeks, we've seen that change, and we're starting to see a wavier pattern with weather systems coming out of the southwest. This weekend, there's one over the northern plains, moving out. That'll draw down a little bit of cool air, shunt the warm weather southward at least temporarily, but it will likely build back with the next ridge. And here's the way things have been going. We get a weather pattern that passes through, we get a few days where we get a little springtime back, and then the next trough begins to build in. And that one is expected to build in again toward the end of this week and this weekend with yet another chance for significant precipitation into some part of the northern plains upper Midwest. I won't yet call exactly where it will be, but somewhere in this region. That'll likely pull down some cool weather as we get toward the end of this first week. And then as we move into the last full week of May, the next ridge builds up. And then once again, the next trough builds in. Now, it looks like we may trend back toward a little bit cooler weather pattern in much of the western part of the region and the northern part as the warm weather shifts east. And that will have some impact on precipitation. As far as the way I see it goes this week, we're going to dry things out a little bit this week after this week 
weekend's rain system, but it looks like we'll see another one building in late in the week, and that one may bring down enough cold air to bring some snow to the very western high plains. Most of the south looks fairly dry, and nothing out of the ordinary over the eastern part of the country. The second full week of the pattern, I expect another system or two, and I'm not going to call exactly whether this will be moderate or heavy, but it does look like the general wet pattern will continue in the northern plains. The dry weather will be limited mostly to the southwest. Saline can leave parts of a field unproductive, but now there's a solution. An Arizona company is taking technology developed for golf courses and using it to take salts out of the soil. Calcium is kind of the bully of the soil, and so it pushes off the other nutrients off of the uh, soil colloids. It was black. The headlands were black, and nothing was growing. Even weeds had a tough time. Then we met up with, with Jim, came with a product called Calcine. Between the drain tile and Calcine, you see now that we have vegetation. We have actual corn coming here. Our experience is normally along roadsides, whether it be highway, putting salt on highways and, and that getting up in the fields or satellite imagery, we looked at it, you can see exactly where the calcine was. We have more growth in those areas. It is worth the investment. I mean, we've got growth, we've got things that are happening, so that's encouraging. Contact Erickson Custom Operations for more information. It's going to be an interesting year in agriculture. We have already seen the markets trade to new crop highs and levels not seen in years. There is uncertainty around the 2022 growing season. Will drought impact production? How many acres will be switched? And will demand remain strong? Are you getting the information you need to make the right marketing decisions? With the changing market environment, maybe it's time to change how you approach your grain marketing. Let Martinson Ag Risk Management get you the news that matters and a marketing plan that suits your needs. AuctionBlock.com First with online equipment auctions in 1999. First in worldwide registered users. AuctionBlock.com Online farm, construction, and transportation equipment auctions every Wednesday. Sell with the leader. Call AuctionBlock today, 218-483-7880 or visit us online at AuctionBlock.com Dynaflow is the ultimate high volume water management pump. Whether you're experiencing flooding, emptying sloughs, transferring ponds, or working on irrigation, the Dynaflow pump works in as little as 18 inches of water and is designed to move 3,000 gallons per minute. The Dynaflow lift pump is the perfect upgrade to your drain tile system. Using line shaft turbine pump technology, these pumps are made to last while operating efficiently. Dynaflow drain tile pumps can move up to 1,500 gallons per minute, up to 3,400 feet away. Grain bins, silos, elevators, and barns dot the prairies. They each have an important role in agriculture, but some are finding new uses. In this week's story from the Ag Week Vault, Rose Dunn visited a Minnesota couple who call a grain bin home. A few years ago, Brian and Cynthia Bachman wanted to downsize into something low maintenance and different. We've always been real creative about our houses. In fact, the, one of the first houses we built was octagon shape. And interestingly enough, at that time, he had said to me, don't ever think you're going to be getting a roundhouse because that's going to be too complicated. And I looked at a few different things, containers. Would have really liked a fuselage out of a 747, but we couldn't move that. They finally decided a grain bin was the way to go. They first planned to buy and move a used bin, but discovered a new one would be more economical and easier to work with. The house is about 2,000 square feet on two floors. It seems small from the outside, but once you step in, it seems much bigger. The bin cost about $17,000, including installation. The Bachmans did most of the construction work themselves, keeping costs low. There were a few tricky things, like figuring out how to install windows, electrical fixtures, and plumbing in a round structure. Even finishing details had to be adapted to the shape. Rope is used for ceiling trim and every vent cover was custom designed and crafted. We had to cut each one before we designed it because they're all different sizes. The exterior is very low maintenance and another plus, it's super energy efficient. Heating costs are less than $400 a year. The Bachmans are happy to be the shape of something new. It is nice to be a little different than everyone else. Near Brainerd, Minnesota, this is Rose Dunn for Ag Week. Since we visited in 2018, the Bachmans have added two more bins for a gazebo and a storage shed. 
still ahead, a new Minnesota license plate honors ag and helps youth at the same time. Since the inception of Vatterstadt, the spirit of innovation has led the company. We push the limits, providing innovative and reliable seating and tillage solutions that simplify everyday life for farmers. We continue to reimagine the capabilities and technology behind farm machinery, providing customers with a perfect emergence while maximizing their yields. We look forward to growing together. The team at North Star Egg is committed to quality and committed to you. We're not just a full service dealer, we're farmers too, so we know you need the best machinery and services that'll keep you going all season long. We have the largest equipment inventory in the upper Midwest with a well-equipped parts and service department. So whether you need machinery tomorrow or parts today, stop in and experience what North Star Egg can offer on our website at northstar-egg.com or give us a call at 701-361-4790. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts. Every season has an end. After spending your whole life building something, it can be hard to move on to your next stage in life. But when that time comes, you deserve to have someone you trust guide you through the process. And by trusting us to pass on your legacy, it gives someone else the chance to create their own. Every auction has a story. Let us share yours. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has the storage, conditioning, and handling equipment to fit any size operation with a wide variety of options and accessories, including our patented Blockbuster Auger to help break up blockages over the center sump gate and a full line of mixed flow grain dryers with even heating, excellent efficiency, and expandable capacities. Protect your investment and market your grain. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with Superior Grain Equipment. A new Minnesota license plate celebrates ag. The plates will benefit 4-H and the state's FFA members. The Minnesota FFA Foundation's executive director says the art on the plates represents everything good about ag, 4-H, and FFA. The rising sun is a token of a new era in agriculture. There are hands on the plate, and those hands represent our, my hands to larger service, which is part of the 4-H motto, as well as the green hand degree that students can receive in the FFA. There is soil and plants to represent growth. $10 from the sale of each plate will go to FFA and 10 will go to 4-H. 19 other states have similar plates benefiting youth ag programs. Stories you'll see on agweek.com this week. A South Dakota farm family finds success in an agritourism venture after their years in the field ended. And University of Minnesota Extension is helping farmers deal with compassion fatigue and other job stress due to the avian influenza outbreak in the state. Thanks for tuning in to Ag Week TV. Remember to check us out daily on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to keep up on all your ag news. See you next week.